Former Fox News anchor Gretchen Carlson's public accusations against her boss, Roger Ailes, the late CEO at Fox News, created turmoil at the company and also the creation of a movement. Her story as a young professional in the entertainment industry would focus the public's attention to the problem of sexual harassment and help pave the way for the accusers of Harvey Weinstein to speak out. The disgraced Hollywood media titan stands accused of over two decades of sexual misconduct towards the women with whom he worked, including, among others, actresses Angelina Jolie and Gwyneth Paltrow. An investigation by the New York Times found allegations stretching back to 1990 about Harvey Weinstein's treatment towards women in Hollywood. The media mogul was fired from the Weinstein Company and is under a criminal investigation in New York and London after several women came forward to accuse him of sexual misconduct, including harassment and rape. And while Harvey Weinstein has denied any allegations of non-consensual sex, he has reportedly been paying off his accusers for decades in exchange for their silence. Now, Gretchen Carlson, the woman who was brave enough to first stand up and fight against her accuser, is speaking out against Harvey Weinstein and the settlements she says are fueling a, quote, silent epidemic. Her quote, she said, once again, we have the revelation that for 30 years, a powerful man has harassed women and the companies they run have enabled it, covered it up and shut up the victims. This happens in all industries and it must stop. Most disturbing is the fact that this company required employees to agree to secrecy before they were even hired. So the harassers are free to harass again, sometimes for decades, and the women are forever silenced, end quote. I recently sat down with Gretchen Carlson to discuss her new book, Be Fierce, Stop Harassment, and Take Your Power Back. I began our conversation by asking her if she had ever anticipated being the face of this issue. Never. Hmm. I mean, every day really has been a surreal experience for me because when I made that biggest decision in my life on July 6, 2016, I had no idea what was going to be in front of me. And so every day has, has been something new. And, and I have to say, even listening to your introduction there, it's, it's like, wow, I mean, it, it, sometimes it feels like an out-of-body experience. Is that me that they're talking about? Oftentimes in our lives, we found ourselves thrust into a position that we never anticipated. Mm -hmm. And we can either embrace it or we can reject it. You've chosen to embrace it, why? Right, I mean, I get asked that a lot. Like, why didn't, why didn't you just, you know, go home and, and concentrate on being mom to your two kids? And while I still love doing that, I've always approached challenges with a mission, you know, like I need to make sure I put all my effort into it. And it was mainly all the women who started reaching out to me. And all of their stories were such a cross section of so many different professions. This issue is really pervasive from waitresses to flight attendants, to lawyers, uh -huh. to journalists, to Wall Street bankers, to teachers, to oil rig operators. It's everywhere. And I felt a sense of duty to be a voice for them because in so many cases, they had never even told their husbands their own personal stories. And I felt this sense of duty to try and make a difference, to put this issue out in the forefront, to have a conversation about it because women are so fearful to do that. I was struck by, in, in reading through this, the, the vast array of professions, and you mentioned, you've heard from so many people. I think on the surface, oftentimes we think, well, there are certain professions that, that have been labeled in, mm -hmm. in all the worst senses of the term, boys clubs types of thing, where there have been stories uh, for decades about just inappropriate, much more than boorish, mm -hmm. but harmful and destructive treatment of women. Why do you think it's, it's such an expanse of, of professions, that it's not limited just to the few that people would suspect? Because I think that cultural shifts take time to change. I mean, if we look at race relations in our country, it's not something that you just switch on a light and, and it's suddenly fixed. It's, it's very similar in nature. But what I've uncovered in my research for Be Fierce is that women seem to be sort of the last group that it's still okay to maybe make fun of or you know to make jokes about we wouldn't do that with other groups of people so why you know you think, i think why do you think that is i you know i i, mean, I, I don't really there's an answer but I i'm just curious to well it's thought. what i've it's what i've discovered now and it's actually changed the way in which i speak to my children at home because i'll think i'll, I'll say to myself like wow, you know, I probably shouldn't say, hey, guys, to my daughter. My daughter actually brought it up to me. She's 14. She said, why do you call me a guy? And I'm like, I call everyone a, a, a guy. Now, maybe that's a small little thing. But to answer your question about why it's so pervasive, I think 
it's going to take an entire cultural shift. And that's what me doing what I did, and that's why this book is starting this national dialogue. We need to talk about it if we have any hope of fixing it. I, I was curious about an observation that people would probably generally think, okay, well, the HR department, the human resources, is, they're my friend, they're my ally. But that's not always the case. Why do you think? I think there's great people that work in human resources departments, and you know they are the place where, where you go to, in many cases, to file these kinds of complaints. But in my book, I also advocate for maybe something, a new approach, where we might have an ombudsman in companies that you could go to that really would be impartial and not receiving a paycheck directly you know, from the company where this activity may be going on. Also, I'd like to change or see change in the way in which we're doing sexual harassment training within companies and really put more effort on the bystander approach. How do we empower the people who actually witness this behavior to not fall into the category of being an enabler, but fall into the category of being also the courageous bystander who defends the person that it's happening to? I mean, if we could just do those two little tweaks, I think that we would you know, have tremendous, tremendous success in trying to, to stop this problem. Last question for you. Having gone through what you went through and doing what you're doing now, are you optimistic? Do you, do you, do you, have you seen any significant progress or might there be some significant progress on the horizon, do you think? So I am a really optimistic person. My life motto is carpe diem. So I do seize every day and every opportunity. It's one of the reasons I set up my fund after my story broke called Gift of Courage, where I financially empower organizations to empower women and girls. And I'm proud to announce the Gretchen Carlson Leadership Initiative, which is a nine city tour kicking off this November to help underserved women. So yes, I'm optimistic because I'm about trying to make a difference for all of the women who reached out to me and all of the women and men who wanna feel empowered in any aspect of their life where they might be being put down. This book isn't just about sexual harassment. It's about bullying in school. It's about not being paid fairly. It's about not getting the promotion you might deserve. So it's really about finding that courage inside your soul to step up, to stand up, and to speak up. I saw that you had dedicated this book to your children. Yes. And I'm sure if, if they don't already know, there'll be a time when they'll sit back and they'll look at this and say, you know what, mom was a champion. I really and appreciate that because I have to tell you that they were the most important factor in making yeah. the biggest decision of my life. And I'm proud to say 15 months later that my children have learned what it means to be brave. Well, it, it, it's, we learn through uh, examples, and you are certainly the example for your children. Gretchen, it's a delight talking with you. Thank you be you well. Thank you so much. Take care.